Tech Tip, my name is Jesse. Last week we took a look at applying your company logo using two different techniques, the extrude versus the split line. If you didn't catch that video, you can check that out here. In that video, I used a block that I created of our CAD Dimensions logo. But where did that block come from? What are the options for getting your company logo into your SolidWorks model? And what's the best option for you? In this video, we'll take a look. This is a topic that can get very confusing because there's a lot of different ways that we can approach this, but I like to simplify it down to two main questions. Number one, what is the purpose of the logo? Is the logo just there for looks, or are you using it in the model for some specific purpose? Number two, what input do you have? And by this I mean what type of file are you using to create this marking in your model? Let's expand on that. Now the first question was, what is the purpose of the logo? Is it to be machined or is it just for looks? And this kind of boils down to, does it need to be a physical part of the model or not? Now, if the answer to that is yes, now again, this would be in cases where you're actually machining that logo in or it's being part of a, a molded process. We've really got two options and they're essentially the same, emboss or deboss. We're either adding or removing material in the shape of the logo. Now, if the answer to that is no, and I like to think this is the majority of the time, then we can use a more graphical approach. Now here you'll see a technique like using a decal or using that split line approach that we took a look at last week. Now the second question is what input do you have? And this really comes in the form of three different options most of the time. You'll either have a raster image provided. This is typically a JPEG or a PNG. You'll have a vector image. That's an Illustrator file, typically of some sort, or a 2D CAD file like a DXF or a DWG. Now again, depending on what you're trying to do with this logo, you might prefer or use different file formats for different purposes. Now the physical, as well as the split line, actually share the same process. So for these three options, we'll be taking any of these file formats and converting them one way or another, which we'll explore more in this video, to a SOLIDWORKS sketch. The decal, however, is a little bit different in the sense that we can take a raster image and directly drop that into our SOLIDWORKS model. Now this has its own challenges, but Jim wrote a great blog for improving your workflow with decals, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Now the majority of these techniques require a SOLIDWORKS sketch. So let's take a look at how we would get from any of these inputs into a SOLIDWORKS sketch. Let's start off with the raster image. This is probably the most common input that you'll have. And again, this comes in the form often of a JPEG or sometimes a PNG. A PNG can be preferable because a PNG file has the capability of saving an alpha channel, which means that that can store transparencies. Now in creating a SOLIDWORKS sketch, from the raster image, we have two options. We can use the auto trace functionality in SOLIDWORKS or we can manually trace it. Let's take a look at both. Let's take a look at the auto trace options first. Now auto trace sounds like an attractive option, but it depends on how closely you need to represent your logo or image. Now all we have to do in order to do this is go to our add-ins, make sure we have auto trace turned on and insert a sketch image. Again, I'll bring in the logo. Now there's a couple things you want to keep in mind when doing auto trace, and that is that we'll want an image that has good contrast. So in this case, we've got that. We have black on white. You want a good edge for auto trace to try to look for. So you want high contrast and high resolution. This isn't particularly high resolution, but again, depending on what we're doing with it, it might be just fine. Now, when you have auto trace turned on, you'll see a next button here. And from here, we can access the auto trace options. So what we need to do is choose by one of these four methods, what part of the image we would like to trace. In this case, we can just use our rectangle marquee. And I'll move this over somewhere along here and begin trace. Now, whatever I select from within that region will be auto traced. And you can see it doesn't do a great job here. Now we can move these tolerances around uh, and adjust both the image 
and the tolerance at which it is trying to map SOLIDWORKS geometry onto our image. Now, from what I've experienced, if we're looking to get a SOLIDWORKS sketch out of this that's usable, especially if we need to machine this or something, to that effect, I will not use this method and actually manually trace. I find that with manually tracing, I have much more control and I know exactly what I'm getting in the SOLIDWORKS model. So let's take a look at that procedure next. Here I've created a time lapse of me manually sketching over the CAD Dimensions logo. Now there's no magic to this. I'm just working along, matching up by eye, and lining things up as I go. Now here, if you did have any dimensions or a particular aspect ratio that your logo needs to maintain, you can put that in right here as well. This sketch took me about seven minutes of real time to create, and in my mind this is seven minutes well spent. After I complete this, I can use this over and over again for various projects. I can save this into my design library if I want to, or in this case what I did was I created a block. We'll talk about that in a bit. After I completed this logo, I actually wanted a smoother look. So I went back in and I created fit splines to represent the geometry. This just smoothed things out and gave me a little nicer look. I was happy with the way it turned out. Again, for another couple minutes worth of modeling, I can reuse this over and over again. The next likely input would be a vector image. Now a vector image usually comes from Adobe Illustrator or some vector graphics software and you'll often find these files in the format of AI or EPS. Now again, we can essentially convert this into a raster image and use the same manual trace or auto trace options or we can try to import this vector image directly into SOLIDWORKS. Now again, a vector image stores those shapes so there is a chance of getting that information into SOLIDWORKS as sketch entities and we'll take a look at that here. If I come up to File, Open, we can choose from this list an Adobe Illustrator file. Now I made the CAD Dimensions logo using Adobe Illustrator so I can directly select that file here. What this does is it will open up Adobe Illustrator, it will export the geometry and send that into SOLIDWORKS. So here we see the converted geometry from that Illustrator file. Now again, because the Illustrator file stores shapes, we are able to convert that over into SOLIDWORKS geometry. Now this works very well, and depending on what your purpose is for this logo, this might work okay, but you do have to be a little bit careful using this process because graphics files don't always directly correlate with the CAD model. Here you can see there's some little pieces that will need to be cleaned up. Okay, there's an extra section in here. I'll need to clean that up. And depending on how this file is made in Illustrator, you might see different results. The last and least likely option is that you actually already have a 2D CAD file of your logo, a DXF or DWG or something like that. Now this we can directly import. So if that's what you got, this might be a good option for you. Chances are, if you have one of these, it's actually been converted from something else into a DXF, or it's something that somebody had traced quite a while ago. However, if it's a clean file, it still can be a very usable format for getting your logo into SOLIDWORKS. All we have to do to do that, select a plane, go to Insert, DXF, DWG, make our selection, Choose what to do with this DXF as it gets into SOLIDWORKS. In this case, I want a 2D sketch. Choose what layers, if there are multiples. In my case, I only have one layer. And there we have it. Now again, this of course depends on how clean your DXF or DWG file is coming in. Now that you've got your logo as a usable SOLIDWORKS sketch capable of creating geometry, I'll recommend one last step, and that is to create a block. This is a simple procedure and all you need to do is select your sketch, go to Tools, Blocks, Make. 
I also typically add an insertion point just to make things easier to add later. From here you can right click on the block and actually save this externally. Save it somewhere where you remember where it is. Once it's a block, all we have to do is go to Tools, Blocks, Insert. You can browse to it, in this case it's already in the part, and we can stamp that down as one single entity. This is my favorite way to distribute geometry that's difficult to work with. Now with your block created, you can create an extrude, an extrude cut, a split line, or if you have a cylindrical or conical face, a wrap. Here we can emboss, deboss, or scribe. Now last but not least, and probably the most obvious of the options, would be to add a decal. Now this is a great option if it's purely visual and you just want to tack your logo onto a face. Now we can do this by going up to the Display Manager. On the middle tab is Decals. Right click and add decal. From here we can browse, find our decal, and I'll choose this PNG image. Now I can choose the face I want it to be mapped to. And here's one of the benefits of using a PNG image. If I'm using a JPEG, I'll have to choose a selective color to try to remove, to remove the white background. With a PNG, it's already got an alpha channel that I can extract. So by choosing the alpha channel, we can see that removes the white background. And now I can just orient the decal in the location that I want. Rotate, scale, drag and when we're happy with its placement we can say okay now again Jim has a great blog with some tips for working with decals and I'll put that link in the description below all right so let's summarize real quick of where we've just been now in this order I will generally approach this the decal it's the lightest the quickest uh, if you're just looking for a visual, you almost always have a JPEG of the logo. So that's usually where I start. If I move from there, I'll usually move down to a split line. And again, typically I'll move from a decal to a split line because I'm doing rendering and I'm looking for uh, some appearance flexibility. I can actually use SolidWorks appearances on those split faces. And that's typically why I'll take that approach. And then lastly, if I have to, then I'll put in uh, the physical um, the physical logo. And again, that is for purposes where I'm trying to machine in that logo or that's going to be in a mold that we're generating that needs to be you know, machined for the molded purpose. So I hope this video has helped you guys figure out what method will be good for you. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.